it's do but this. it's a double edge. Right? So <laughs> hope you've got a lot to say because <laughs> I have like one question. <laughs> okay, that's cool. First of all, I mean congratulations. I saw it just the other day, and you did a wonderful job. I, I think this is a very very complicated subject. It's not an easy movie to make. I can appreciate how much effort you made. Um, what compelled you to 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 make this film? You know. Well, I was I was resistant at first. I just I just been in Kenya. Made I made a film called The First Grader about education in Kenya, and uh, where I'd lived in a very remote community for a year, and uh, uh, working with children that never seen a moving image, you know, and uh, and those children were all in the movie, and their mums, their dads, the non-actors. It was a very very small little film, and one of the producers on that, Anant Singh, said, "What do you think about making Mandela?" And I was like. I, how do you make Mandela into a movie? Yet? You know, it would be 50 part miniseries. And uh, then you still have to leave stuff out. I'd read the book, and the book is a huge, sprawling book of amazing events that chart his whole history. And he said, look, your film's coming to South Africa, come come with it, and, um, and come to South Africa. So I went to South Africa, and he'd invited all the family and the comrades that were on Robben Island with Madiba and some of the jailers and some of the people that were involved in the struggle. And I realized that there may be a way forward of, of, of if I, if I, I mean, I'm from Manchester in England, so I thought if I work, go to the country and I just listen and observe and use the fact that I'm from outside and just talk to these people, there may be a personal into the story, there may be a way of making these characters real characters, flesh and blood, you know, flaws and, as men and women. And when I started to talk like that, the family and the foundation and all the people said, that's what we want, that's, that's exactly what we want. You know, Mandela is known as this saint and this icon. We would love to have a, a, a story told about him as the, as, the, as the flesh and blood man, as the father, as the husband. So that's basically what I did. I, I then retraced Mandela's steps, went to Kuna where he was born, met people that knew him as a young man, started to find that at the heart of the story was this very, very powerful love story between him and Winnie Mandela. And these two forces came together, were so strong, but then they were ripped apart. And then one was living and breathing the struggle in Soweto, and one was incarcerated for 27 years. And that what happened to them as a couple was uh, astonishing, really astonishing. And, and, and that unlocked the script for Bill Nicholson, who'd been on it for a while in terms of you know writing the script and tried various drafts but they'd never quite worked but charting that backbone of Mandela's life of the hundred year history but at the heart of it showing the story of love and forgiveness that unlocked it for us as filmmakers and that set us on the road to making it. Have you ever met him? Have yeah, you ever met him? I was very lucky just, bef just before you know we started shooting by that point I'd met everybody you know that I could uh, men that were next to him in the cells on Robin Island and his, and his wonderful, beautiful daughters and some of the jailers and the interrogators. By that point, I've met most people and the last person I met just before I started shooting, and it was just before his, his 94th birthday, so I went and met him in his house in Houghton, and, uh, which is in Johannesburg, and had an afternoon tea with him and I'll never forget it. The energy that comes off him just is electrifying. I mean, he's... He's a truly unique, uh, warm human being. I mean, he's just the capacity in him for forgiveness and for love. I mean, he's just, he'll never leave me that, never. That's a wonderful, wonderful memory. Yeah, oh, it's um, brilliant. And it also, you know, it was, just, it was just at the point where, you know, by that point we were just about to go and he knew I was there. We'd, we'd take, I'd taken uh, an iPad with these images on him for him. We were looking at these images of his life and he was talking about each person and the, the event and he knew where each photograph was taken. He was so sharp and he got to the last image of this little kid twisting his nose and, and he said, he saw me as the man. He saw me just as the man. And he looked right in me and I, and I don't think Mandela wastes any words. I think he knew that I was trying to make a film that was going to be honest. And then three weeks ago, we go back to South Africa with the film and all the comrades and the family and the family friends and the people that are in the household with Mandela and Winnie and the children were all there with, the, with George Bezo, who's the lawyer, and Ahmed Kathrada, who was on Robin Island with him. And we show the film for the first time to them, you know, in a cinema. And they all talked about it being true to their struggle and true to their families and, and their lives. And that meant everything to, 
to us as filmmakers, you know, in terms of what we were trying to do with the film was to tr to show him as a as a man, and and that, and that made his journey even more extraordinary. To to think he came from where he came from and for what he had to give up in terms of family and and his children is is extraordinary. Not many men would do that. <laughs> No, I mean, he went into prison with a set of beliefs and the world came to Mandela. You know, he, he, you know, lost his family, lost his love, came out an old man in his 70s and had the hardest task then to do. Never manipulated the press, served one term. But also, I, what I hadn't quite realised coming from outside, I remember him coming out of prison, I remember him being inaugurated, but I hadn't quite realised just that period of history was so horrific. I mean, that descent of, uh, into madness, that that pernicious, racist evil had happened. I mean, it just, that country was in free fall. How it did not end up in a bloodbath. It took great perseverance from him, who saw against his wife, against his fellow ANC leaders, that they could, that they, the only way forward was th through peaceful means, through democracy, through the vote. And he pushed that through against all the odds. I mean, de Klerk, none of them knew what to do. And he, with other men and women, he paved the way to, for a peaceful transition. And I don't think there's been any other example in history that's, that anybody's been able to do that. So on that level, it's an extraordinary story, but also on a personal level, you know, to have no hatred, to have no, carry no bitterness and anger towards his enemy, and to have such forgiveness. Is, is truly humbling, I think, an, an, an amazing, uh, amazing story. And, you know, for us as filmmakers, we were constantly surprised and, uh, and learned so much while we were making it about, about the power of a, of a human spirit. And you never freaked out at night sometimes, just thought, I'm, you know I'm a what? kid from Manchester, what I, am I doing? The one thing I kept hanging me. on onto, the, the, the one thing I hang, hung on to was to be absolutely true to the men and women that we're representing, to be true, to be honest, to create 360 degree worlds that were real, to repopulate those with people that had lived the struggle or were living the struggle in South Africa today, to be honest. So it was the opposite, really. I mean, now I think about the responsibility. I think, oh my goodness, now is the real. Oh my, you know, the film's about to come out, and I think about the responsibility. But at the time, there is an energy in South Africa, and because we were approaching it in this way that we were going to be dropping the audience in it, that we were absolute 360 degree real worlds. That the communities that we were working with were all involved in the film. They knew what we were doing. They knew what we were trying to do. They knew we were trying to be honest and real. So that gave a kind of everybody, it upped everybody's game, everybody, that if you'd opened a drawer, there would have been things in that drawer, even if the camera never saw it, there would have been things in the drawer that should have been there on that day. If you'd opened somebody's briefcase, somebody's pocket was full of stuff that would have been in there for that period. The level of detail that went into it. And it was, yeah, I woke up earlier than I should have done because I was so excited to get back to, to, to work, to, 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 to work with these people who brought such commitment and energy to the, to the film. And that's in the DNA of the film, you know, that, the recordings that we made weren't done on a post soundstage. They were shot, recorded live. The songs, the soundtrack was 5.1 mixed while we were there. So when you're in the audience watching the movie, you're feeling it. You're feeling that power and that emotion from those, from those men and women, not just the, the leading characters, but the men and women that actually were part of the struggle. Justin, one last quick question. Just if he, if he saw it, if Mandela was able to see this movie, um, before he passes away. What would you hope he would say or think about this? What is your hope that, what kind of reaction would he have to this movie? That it was true to him, that it was true to him and it was honest to him. And that, you know, he felt that that, the film represented not all of his life. I mean, how can we begin to do that? But at least is honest to him and, and honest to the people that we're representing. And that's certainly the feedback I've got from the people close to him the people that uh, know him intimately and his wife and his, his children, they all feel that it's an honest and truthful representation of their father's life and their husband's life. Um, so that's what I'd hope. Um, and that inspires a, a new generation to understand an iconic leader from the history pages of history and they can see him and be inspired and he, because he's just like them with, and was just like them with hopes and ambitions and dreams. Very nice. Space in the car. Justin, thank you. <laughs>